of museums and special collections at the University of Aberdeen. That sounds important, is it? Well, I don't know if it's important as much as being certainly very worthwhile doing and very exciting to get to do, to work with the collections that are certainly among the most important in Scotland, if not you know, greater than that. Um, partly because they're so diverse, there's things from all over the world, things from lots of different periods, lots of different disciplines. Um, and as well as the collections, there are also people who work with them, both of those who work within the team, but also people who visit, the scholars from around the world, the experts in, in some of the, the things we have, who are able to come and study them and then talk to us about them. So I learned so much about so many different things and every day I'm finding out something new about some aspect of the collection or helping other people to do it. So um, definitely a, a wonderful job to have. Could you give us a countdown of your top 10 from the University Collections? Coming in at number 10, we'll go for the Museum Wormianum, which is a printed record of a museum by Ole Vorm in Denmark. Um, coming in at number nine is a beaded sash uh, made by people in the southeastern part of what's now the USA by the Cherokee, the Creek, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw. Um, going up at number eight, a uh, silver beaker um, from Gdansk, now in Poland, um, from uh, Andrew Thompson in 1643. Um, at number seven, a 4,000 year old prehistoric beaker from a, a burial in Rathen in Aberdeenshire. At number six, going down, he's missing rather important parts, so he's definitely not in a good way, is Papi Mashi Man by Louis Ozu. At number five, a Gallic prayer book and key by a wizard from the Isle of Lewis in the 19th century. At number four, going down, the head of despair. At number three, a new entry, we have Scotland's first printed book, the Aberdeen Breviary. At number two, an Inuit kayak that appeared uh, with an Inuit man on board about 300 years ago at Belhelvey, just north of Aberdeen. And this week's number one is a mummified ancient Egyptian cat, um, complete with a cat scan. If you could take one object from the collections home with you, what would it be? Why this object and where would you put it in your house? I think I'd, uh, I'd like one of the stained glass windows that was originally in Marshall College, um, put there in 1906 by the stained glass art artist Douglas Strachan. Um, and I think the one I'd go for would be one of the, the swirly ones depicting the creation. I think it would look really good hanging in a window. Uh, light coming through at different times of day um, looks tremendous. We've normally got them on display in the Sir Duncan Rice Library, but I think I'd quite like it at home. I imagine that being head of collections is a bit like being Indiana Jones. Indy is quoted as saying, if you want to be a good archaeologist, you've got to get out of the library. So what's the most exciting adventure you've had as part of your job? This is quite an easy one. Um, a number of years ago, we repatriated a sacred bundle um, that we had recorded in the collection as a headdress um, to the Kainai First Nation in Canada. And a year after we returned it, it went back into, into use by, by them, um, they invited me to see it dance for the first time since it's gone back in the sun dance in the reserve in southern Canada. So and that was that was phenomenal. That definitely is the, the most exciting thing I've done as a result of, of having my job here. OK, we've got some quick fire questions for you now. First up, mummified cat or petrified dog? No doubt here it definitely has to be the mummified cat. Good answer. How about Pliny the Younger or Pliny the Elder? Um, had to think about this because I really wasn't sure what the difference was. Pliny the Younger definitely literally benefited from nepotism, um, whereas Pliny the Elder um, died saving friends um, from the eruption of Vesuvius, so it has to be Pliny the, the Elder. An Aberdeen buttery or a Cornish pasty? Again, no competition. It has to be a buttery or a rowie, whichever you want to call them. They're wonderful, particularly with homemade marmalade. Finally, Stonehenge or the Stone Roses? Well, I did archaeology. It has to be Stonehenge. As part of a lockdown challenge, we asked you to create a museum label for one item in your fridge. Can you show us what you came up with? So I looked in the fridge and I found a bottle of beer. No product placement here. Um, so I've written a label for it, which you can see now. If you want to learn more about the University of Aberdeen Museums and Special Collections, you can follow us on social media at UOA Collections.